Interested in fighting ship-to-ship jewels in the Age of Discovery? Let's find out how you can do just that with Galleys and Galleons. If you're anything like me, you're a big fan of games that let you get miniatures on the table nice and easily, that don't require hours and hours of research or reading through the rules to try and remember everything. Because I'm someone who likes to play a variety of different games. Now, if I only ever played one type of game, then I would perhaps pick something a bit more detailed that was a bit more simulationist. That said, games like this one are perfect for me because, as I say, it allows me to get a couple of miniatures down on the table and play some games without a lot of, of background reading. So we have Galleys and Galleons here from Nick Wright and Ganesha Games, a tabletop war game for Wii ships in the Age of Discovery. So this is a, a kind of a it not entirely serious take on naval warfare of the uh, 15th through to 17th centuries. That said, there's no reason why you can't play historical battles with this. This is a, uh, it's a 78 page uh, paperback book that you can get from Ganesha Games. I believe there is a digital file as well, so if you, you can download the PDF. There is a contents page in the front, which I will show you. There's no index, unfortunately, but the rules, there's not that much to them. So, you know, the contents is fine. Everything's listed there. You can see it, it's, it's quite detailed. You can get an idea here of the sorts of things that are covered in the game. So we have obviously the basic rules, optional rules. There's, you can board enemy ships. There's all different sorts of special rules for repairs and different rules for your crew. Then we have a really good selection of profiles of different ships, scenarios, campaigns, and then there's some, some sort of fantasy rules at the end there. If you want to add dragons and mermaids and sea monsters and things like that, you can do that as well. So how does the game work? It uses a dice roll mechanism for your ships, which is borrowed from some of the other Ganesha Games products. You have typically, well, you have three dice for each ship. You roll each of those. You can choose how many to roll and you roll them and compare them to the quality rating of a ship. Now, if you roll equal to or more than the quality rating of the ship with a particular die, then that allows you to do one action. So you might think, well, why wouldn't you just roll three dice all the time? Because you get to do three actions. Well, the catch is, if you fail on two of those die, then your turn immediately ends. The ship does make its compulsory move based on the wind, but you lose your turn, your other ships don't get to activate, and play swaps over to the opponent. Now, the, your opponent might also roll uh, two failures and it will jump back to you. But you don't know whether that's going to happen. The dice also track damage for you. There's no damage recording in the game. There's no sheets you have to tick off or, or counters really that you need to use. It's all done on those dice. So as you take damage, you swap out your activation die for a different color. And then when those die roll a one, that means something bad will happen. So it could be a magazine explosion or e extra damage to the rigging or the hull or the captain gets hit. There's all sorts of things that can happen. And I, I really like it because it's a great way of tracking damage without you having to remember anything because everything happens turn by turn. You don't need to keep remembering things. There are a few conditions which can happen, such as your captain being injured or, or damage to your rigging. So you might just want a, a, a little piece of paper just to write down that you know ship A has got rigging damage, so he's going to be moving a bit less. But other than that, there's no record keeping. So that's a big plus for me. Much like the sort of unique mechanics with using dice to track damage, rather than using a tape measure for movement, you have measuring sticks. So you have short, medium, and long, and those track everything from ship movement up to firing at long range, short range. You just use the sticks for everything. So it's nice and simple. The game comes with three different suggestions of measuring stick. But it does say you can use whatever size you like based on the size of the models that you're using, based on the size of the boards. So you can play like I do with small 1 2400 scale ships, or you can play on the floor with massive great big ships. Totally up to you, and I really like that. It's a very, very customizable modular game from that, from that point of view. So what I like about this game, it's fast, it's fun. I really like the dice rolling mechanic, the way that activation works. You're not sitting there waiting for your opponent to, to, to take their turn before you then move all of your ships. When I've played games, I've always had great fun. We always have a real laugh because some really unexpected things can happen. You know, your, your heroic captain in his flagship might just completely fumble on like two or three turns in a row. 
uh, and you're just thinking like, what are you doing? You know, they're completely useless. Other times, the small plucky captain of a small little galley that you didn't think was going to play much of a part, maybe they do really well on their activation rolls and they get right up behind the enemy flagship and can start like pummeling raking fire straight into the rear of the ship. All sorts of crazy things like that can happen. As I mentioned, there's, there's fantasy rules. So if you wanted to do something from a pirate story where you've got a ship up against the Kraken, then you can do that if you want. There is an expansion book for this as well, which adds more rules for sort of fantastical elements and things like that. But the ones that are included are certainly enough to get you, get you going if you wanted to do sort of fantasy battles. There's no reason you couldn't use these rules to do full on fantasy battles. If you had fleets of, for example, elves and dwarves, and ships, you could absolutely use these rules to gain those as well. So they're not, it's not just a historical set, that's historical and fantasy. And I think with a bit of tweaking, you could even make this work for sci-fi. I, I really like the dice mechanic of the game and the way that it tracks damage and everything just means that it's very, very gritty. You know, you're not having to really remember stuff. Everything is right there on the table. You can see it. You don't need to remember anything. It, I just really like it. I really like the way that the activation system works and the way it tracks damage. So I highly recommend the game. The cards that you see me using, um, I didn't make myself. I got those from a fellow YouTuber. His channel is linked in the description below. You can find out where you can get access to those cards, where you can download them. I think he's done an excellent job of making them. And they've certainly made the game even easier for me to play uh, with my group. So yeah, definitely recommend it. Galleys and Galleons, excellent game. Couldn't really ask for anything better. If you've played the game or you know of games like it, then leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.